The most powerful pull of any online open world survival craft game is the abundance of creative freedom and near endless possibilities. Players have a vast and varied environment to explore, structures to build and craft, characters to customize, and elements in the world to survive against. Through these activities, people have the choice on how to accomplish them, and in doing so create their own unique stories and adventures in an imaginative and interactive world. The game mechanics are designed to be both challenging but rewarding, giving players a sense of both fear of failure but also accomplishment and enjoyment. There are three fluid and ever-changing dynamics in these games that are responsible for creating some of the most engaging intense, and unique experiences. The first major dynamic is the idea of risk versus reward. This is most prominent when it comes to resource gathering. A terrible modern gaming practice is to make this process extremely repetitive and a grind, hitting objects ad nauseum. The dilemma then arises. Do you risk more dangerous decisions in order to gather resources faster or better resources, or keep it safe, mundane, and at a slower pace? These decisions are up to each individual player, and factors such as skill level, gear and equipment status, hostile game elements in the area, and of course how desperate you need the supplies are to be considered. Often in on-rail single-player experiences, these choices are made for the player and simply have to go along. But now the responsibility is given to the player, whether or not to risk your life, and if you do, how you plan and execute the mission. The power rests on the player. The most valuable resource you have, however, is not something you can mine or collect, but it is your time, your time in the game, and what you are willing to risk to save more of it. Do you decide to bypass normal resources gathering methods and instead invade another person's base in order to quickly steal their supplies. But the risk is not only the time to plan and execute the mission, but any supplies you may take and if you unexpectedly die, which in and of itself took time to either find, create, or buy for yourself. This helps create a sense of tension while risking your life and equipment, a sense of dread when you fail or die, and a sense of accomplishment when you succeed that is nearly unparalleled in other games. What are you willing to risk to save time, and will it be worth it? Again, the power rests on the player. And this opens up infinite possibilities and unforeseen circumstances for a totally unique experience. Another major dynamic is the idea of presence and persistence. Not only is the world space persistent, but so are the ramifications and ripples of your decisions and actions. This can be most notable with base building mechanics. In addition to aiding survival against hostile game elements, base building allows players and groups to plant your flag within the game space, one that lasts beyond when you log off, in stark contrast to traditional multiplayer experiences. The process of building a base can be monotonous and require collecting resources, but it's what helps separate new players in the world from those who have spent time in it already. It also gives a greater purpose to resource gathering, elevating it above simply having more stuff than other people. When you are deciding, as mentioned, about how much you are willing to risk to gather greater resources, the enduring dilemma about building your base adds another dimension. Base building also helps connect many of the tasks you undertake in these game genres. Collecting resources, crafting, exploring, going on AI missions, trading, engaging with and or fighting against other players, and surviving. All of these activities neatly and presumptively resolve around base building, whether it directly helps build it, maintain it, store your loot, or protect it. It's a reward, in short, for all that effort. To complete tasks within the game world and make smart decisions and have a greater advantage over those who don't. This adds to the base conflict dilemma between players. The endless quest of who is the most powerful group in the world and who will have the best equipment, a la Lord of the Flies mantra. The cycles of being raided, counter raided, stealing other players loot and having to defend your pile of gold can construct immersive situations in which you, not a game, make the decisions. After getting raided and loot stolen, should you try and find the people responsible and seek revenge or be content with what you have and move on? The last dynamic is player habits, role playing, and general morality and attitudes towards other players. This is the most transitional dynamic that is in constant flux because you, the player, are reacting to and adapting to other changes going on in the world space. When you encounter a new unknown player in a hostile world, the decision to treat them hostile on site and ask questions later, to ignore them, or attempt to befriend them is all on you. In a player versus environment game where the majority of things out in the world will kill you, how will you treat other real players? It does, in a strange way, test the morality of players, and some games have even created such morality systems to reflect how you and your team tackle these dilemmas. Dilemmas. Players can join groups or clans, which allows them to make new friends, collaborate on projects, and even form strong relationships with other players. On the flip side, you can form enemies with other players, even a rival clan, and engage in what amounts to clan warfare. And as I've said several times already, the fact that these decisions are yours helps create captivating gameplay with vast possibilities and branching storylines at your fingertips. A game that exemplifies all of these elements is Daisy Epoch. Daisy Epoch was a zombie survival mod for the popular 
Battlefront Armor 2 game. Its blend of exploration, survival, and base building mechanics in a persistent online open world sandbox was difficult to find elsewhere, if at all at that time. Players were able to explore a post-apocalyptic world, scavenge for food, water, weapons, and tools, all while building up their own base of operations, building relationships with other players, and survive as long as possible. It had player interactions, allowed them to customize their own characters and create unique stories, making the game even more interesting. It was an intense, thrilling experience, where the most dangerous enemies in the early game were zombies and hunger, but in the later game transitioned to other players. It is a special refreshing change of pace from other games in the same genre, and has all the right elements that make these great games. There was always new versions of the mod coming out, and new updates. Nearly every server had some kind of unique feature or asset, like a variety of missions and objectives, providing players with a sense of purpose and accomplishment. Other games have since tried to emulate this experience, with some succeeding more than others. Rust and Ark Survival Evolved are arguably the most successful of these, having grown from Steam early access games to immensely popular ones. The Day Before is an upcoming release that aims to embody what Daisy did so well, an interactive, immersive, online open world survival craft game, and is currently slated to be released on March 1st of this year, although it has already been delayed so fingers crossed. These types of open world games are successful when they focus on allowing the player to have as much choice and control as possible, and allowing them to have lasting effects on both their character, the environment they occupy, and how they play the game. A wide and diverse world to discover, resources to gather, bases and homes to construct, and conflicts with other players to resolve are just some of the activities that are available. The range of encounters, possibilities, and decisions you make create one of the most unique, immersive, and captivating gaming experiences experiences on the market.